This is Hubble at 25, our 25th anniversary exhibit honoring the Hubble Space Telescope. When you first enter the exhibit, you're going to see the instruments that are inside Hubble, how all those Hubble instruments see targets out in space differently. Now, Hubble was designed to be repaired in space, and uh, that's kind of like what we focus on, those people stories, because they went up there five times to fix Hubble. 4B, that fifth mission, was really a spectacular mission. The light bulb goes out in your refrigerator, you're not going to change the whole refrigerator. So they went up with the intent of actually getting inside the instruments and repairing them up in space. And this was going to be a very novel thing to do because some of these systems were not made to be replaced in space. So special tools had to be built. These are the actual tools that flew in space on STS-125 for that final servicing mission. Michael Soluri, a local New York photographer, followed the STS-125 crew around and took some amazing images of their training, but also took images of their tools. And these are not adaptations of tools that we're familiar with, but tools that had to be invented from scratch. Having grown up during the race to space in the 60s, I studied to be a planetary geologist. But visualizing the world around me was much more compelling than looking at the statistical issues of the randomness of, of pebble structures in, you know, sedimentary rock. As the years went on during Apollo and Skylab and Shuttle, there was a lack of artfulness. There was something where the humanity wasn't really being revealed. It was scripted. And trying to seek the art and humanity behind the scenes of NASA was a very driving force for me seeing them in the environment they were, and being able to go back over and over again, discover something new that's not scripted. I felt I wanted to do something that could be deeper. That is challenging because you're dealing with a federal institution in which it's technology driven. So it took a long time, decades, constantly pressing. Can I come in and spend some time? Can I get behind the scenes? As a result, of an article that I did with Corey Powell for Discover Magazine. That opened the door to document what would be the last ever human spaceflight mission to the Hubble Space Telescope. And all those folks down at Goddard Space Flight Center that made much of this exhibition possible, they welcomed me because they realized I was trying to go farther in my work. And all I had to do was ask, well, what about the tools? And that became a journey in itself. Although I'm a people person photographer, I like still like. And here's an opportunity to do something that I thought I saw the tools as pieces of sculpture, one of a kind. They were all one of a kind. And over a period of a year and a half, I started photographing the tools in situ, on location. Everything had to be cleaned down. I had to work in a bunny suit. It had never been done before. Some of the results are shown here along with the actual EVA tools that the Intrepid has here on display. The Smithsonian National Air and Space Museum uh, has acquired eight of these for the permanent collection. Jill and Justin uh, were the engineers on the development of EVA tools. Here they're showing the PRG, uh, the portable grip tool. Jill and Justin were uh, essential in the coming up with the design solutions for fixing the Hubble because there were, there were issues that came up that simply weren't meant to be repaired in space. A week out before launch, all the equipment is aboard the shuttle. We're five days from launch. We're on the launch pad and we meet this thermodynamic engineer and his area was this launch pad. Here's the shuttle, I mean literally, dwarfing us. And he's explained to us the dynamics of a launch, what happens when a shuttle ignites. And I came away with some insight that gave context to the purpose of human spaceflight. Every time a rocket takes off, it leaves its impression. A lot of water is down there, it would liquefy and then it would freeze and it would leave an impression. After a launch, thermodynamic engineers go in and mark where there's areas of weakness or were affected by the power of a launch. To me, this was something that was not only ethereal, but it was temporary. Particularly important is that none of that exists anymore because NASA leased the launch pad to SpaceX. And SpaceX, in order to convert the pad for its own rockets, tore out everything, so I've got the only evidence of that in a very contextual, ethereal way. Armstrong left from that launch pad to go to the moon. This crew left to go to the Hubble. And what did the Hubble do afterwards, basically? The Hubble extended man's ability 
to explore the mysteries of the universe. While I was at Goddard talking to the folks about what they did on Hubble, right there in the clean rooms were components of what's next, the James Webb Space Telescope. The launch is uh, scheduled for 2018, uh, and Hubble will still be working, so they can work in tandem on things. Come on out to the Intrepid Museum and enjoy it. Take a look at the Solari images, very artistic uh, look at the space mission, the guys in training, and the tools they used. Wonderful stuff.